G'day. I'm super excited because I have just express designed myself. For myself. We'll just wait for that car to go past. Those couple of cars. This is my front garden. And as you can see, we've got some privacy issues. We're right on the road, just like most houses. We've got houses across the street, just like most houses. And we've got people walking past, just like most houses. Uh, the problem is, is that they can look straight into our bedroom windows. And so at night time, we've always uh, have the curtains closed. And I hate curtains, and I want you to know that, how much I hate them. Hopefully, once this is all finished and it's flourishing, we can get rid of them. Don't tell my wife. Anyway, so in this design, we have everything we need to be able to do it. So you could do it yourself. Uh, now, the first thing that we need to do is mark out the gardens. And in case you, in case you can see this uh, white powder on my hands, um, I haven't been sniffing coke, I've been handling lime. And that's how I like to mark out, um, say, landscaping areas. Instead of using the spray paints, I'll use lime. And I'll show you that in a tick. Here we go. So, this is my bucket of lime. So you get them from, I don't know how much they cost, five bucks or something from the hardware store. Um, this is the same lime that you use in the gardens to sweeten the soil uh, and builders can use it in their cement mixes and waters, things like that. Here we go, another car. Now, interesting fact, that if we were to have a 1.8 metre block wall there, that's got about the same sound barrier uh, if we were to have seven metres of thick vegetation. So we've got six metres that we're using here I'm not really expecting to, it to have too much of an effect, but anyway, interesting fact. So, once you've got your lime, just get a bottle where you've cut the top off, and then you can use the lime, you just shake it out and tap it out so that you can uh, you mark out where, where it corresponds on the plan. Just like this. Yeah. Watch out. Anyway, I'll go and mark it out and we'll have a look after. While we wait for the grass to, to start to die off, I may as well go and cut back this tree. It looks pretty hideous, and when you're doing any sort of tropical garden, you really don't want to have small leaves falling down. Leaves are a lot harder to clean up than fronds. Uh, so it's going, so it's time to wake up the neighbours, and I'll, I'll get this little fella going. <laughs> All right, so we're making some progress. Today is planting day. Uh, I've got a whole lot of work to do and not much time to do it. Tomorrow I'm going down to Tassie, which I'm really excited about. So I've got to get it done today. I've got all the plants, I've got the soil here, everything's ready to go. Uh, you can see just behind me, we've got this very wicked patch of shade. You've got the shade there, then you've got sun on the other side. This is pretty much the middle of the day. Um, so this is all through winter, this is going to get no sun. So I've uh, designed it accordingly. Uh, so we've got lots of shade loving plants in that area there, which will be yeah, really nice because they have uh, generally shade loving plants have lots of colourful foliage. There is a fair bit of design that has gone just into this tiny little pocket here. Uh, now I've got the mower and I've cut it as low as I can. I don't really want the, um, the leftover or turf clippings to be decomposing uh, underneath the soil. Um, and you m probably can't see, but I've gone and used my whipper snipper. I've tipped it up on an angle and I've cut in really sharp uh, the edges of the path which goes through the garden as well as the perimeter of the garden to keep it separate from the lawn. Um, and that's going to be what I'm going to use as my guide. And every time I go to whipper snip, I'll be tipping my whipper snipper on its edge and cutting that in nice and sharp to give a real clear definition. Okay, believe it or not, there's actually good ways to shovel and bad ways to shovel. What you don't want to be doing is being lazy while you're shoveling. That's the best way to hurt your back. Uh, if we want to preserve it, which we do, we're going to put ourselves in a position where we're holding the shovel nice and low. We're sticking our butt right out. We're going to be pushing the shovel forward rather than across. So we don't want to be going like this. We want to actually get the shovel, something along the lines of that. Nothing too special, but you want to get right down, use your butt, 
um, squeeze your core, things like that, whatever. Listen to the yoga lady. Um, I like to get my saw delivered onto driveways, and so that way it's easy for me to clean up. And I can just go along like that. If I go and put it onto the lawn and I've got a tarp underneath, when I get to that point, I'm going to be ripping up the grass or at least ripping the tarp. So don't, just put it on the driveway, move it on the same day. You don't want to leave it there for too long because you'll stain your concrete. Um, now a couple of cool facts is that there's about 20 shovelfuls of soil per barrow. And fill up your barrow nice, you know, like you would uh, a teaspoon with Milo. Uh, you don't want it flat. Um, nice and heaped, that way you're, you're doing less trips which is good. Um, there's roughly about 12 wheelbarrows of soil, gravel, mulch, whatever, per cube of soil delivered, so per metre. So we've got 6 metres here, um, so you go 6 by 12, that's 72 wheelbarrows that I have to move today. Um, another cool fact is that it roughly takes about an hour per metre, or at least give yourself an hour per metre. It takes me a lot less, but I do it uh, far too often and I'm pretty efficient at it. Um, and plus, I, I just want to get it done. So, I'm not, I don't have to move it far today, so hopefully it's going to take me a lot less time. Um, so anyway, I'd better get to it, otherwise the sun's going to go down. Good morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and it's um, nice and frosty. Um, overnight I've left all the, the larger structural plants out um, so that I can look through the bedroom window and start to judge uh, whether they're in the, the right position or not. Um, and now is the time that we go and have a look at all the plants and we just sit back, put in the headphones, listen to some Tibetan monks and just imagine what all these plants are going to look like uh, when they get to their full size. So there's a, I saw this terrible um, uh, gangster movie recently that some bloke said uh, you gotta shoot where they go to be don't shoot at them you gotta shoot where they go to be and that's pretty much what we're doing with the plants here is that uh, we're, we're trying to imagine what they're going to be we're planting them for what they're going to be not what they are now um, so pretty much all I do is I put the headphones in and uh, and do some staring I think that looks good. All right, so uh, now I've gone and placed out all the other, I guess, understory plants. So I've planted in uh, the, the more structural, taller plants, and this just makes it a lot easier. If you've got all these small plants around while you're trying to plant the big plants, you just knock them over and you end up losing where you actually had them placed. So now I've also given you uh, the condescending talk on how to shovel soil. I'm gonna show you how to plant a plant. Really easy. Get your shovel, put it down towards the base of the plant, move it out of the way. We're only going to be digging to the same depth as what the pot is. So, all right. Okay, something just like that. If we we're going into existing soil, uh, we would go twice as wide as the pot um, and so that way when we go and backfill we put some compost in we improve around the pot um, Because we brought the soil in it doesn't matter. So this is pretty much just the, the same width as the pot Get your plant Hold it at its base Give a bit of a tap out like this and just plonk her in When I backfill I give a gentle firming just around the sides. What we don't want is air pockets. So just a gentle firming. We're not compacting it down. And then I just spread it out with my hands to create 
a little bit of a dish. Just a dish there that when we water it, the water collects in there and it just, it doesn't run off. Now I've got a whole heap of work to get through. I've got to catch a plane to Tassie uh, in only a few hours time, so I better get cracking. Wonderful, just about there. I've given everything a really deep soak and now I've got to give it a drink of seaweed. What I've gone and bought is just from Bunnings, about 20, 30 bucks. Uh, you just go and fill it up with sea salt, attach it to your hose, and it's the easiest way to go and give your plants a good feed. Now, this is what we started off with. Okay, and this is pretty much identical to what I offer in my Express Designs, uh, which are uh, plans which are done for DIY. So if you were to get an Express Design, you can watch a video, you know what to do. Now, if we were to go and build a fence, and actually just turf this area, it's probably about the same cost as to actually get it designed by me, as well as have all the plants supplied uh, and the materials. Um, so a couple thousand bucks, and I know which I prefer. Well, I've got a plane to catch, and these need a quick feed, so I better get to it. Catch you next time.